All right, so day, or video three, not day three, it's been a little bit more than that, of working on Umbra here. Um, let's see, I don't think I've actually worked on him since I took the video yesterday. Not that that means much. I might have poked at him a little bit. But I think I'd like to work on his head today and start getting that sorted out. So, what I'm going, I pulled up a whole bunch of horse head, Arabian head reference photos. And it's a bunch of different horses. Um, well, a few of them are of the same horse. But I do have a lot of different ones. And uh, I'm spread across two screens here. So I'm going to be pulling from a lot of them, um, looking at different things. Some of the photos are more useful than others. Some are really big, which is always very nice. Um, some aren't. So whatever. I also did go ahead and found my tools that I couldn't find yesterday. So I have my dividers here. Um, and these I can use for my proportions. They're very, very useful. It's just a very simple tool. I mean, it's like a compass, but it has points on both sides. And I can use it to, for example, check his head length against my reference photo, which I scaled to be the same size. My reference photo is at a little bit of an angle, um, his head is, so I'll want to be careful not to mismeasure there. But I scaled it so that it's the same size on this computer screen, so if I was to move it to a different computer, it would no longer be the right size. So it looks like his body could use a little bit more depth. But his leg links aren't too bad, it looks like. So that's good. I'll have to check them against each other as well. That's not too bad. It's always nice when they work out to be about right. One's a little short. Not too much, but a little bit. So that's just something I'll have to keep in mind as I, as I work on him to recheck things. But again, I'm going to work on his head today. And it's a lot easier to work on his head if his head isn't attached to his body. Since I can easily, easily, easily remove it, I am going to do so. So since this is all soft clay, there is wire running up in there, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm just going to cut his head off. I'm actually going to cut it off right in front of his ears, leave his ears attached, because I don't want to work on his ears right now. They will get squished if I try and finish them right now. Whoops. I guess I put one ear on each side. Leave that ear off. Leave that lock off. He doesn't need that. And then this should just slide off there nicely. So, now that he's been beheaded, I can actually turn his head around much more easily and look at it from all different angles. So I can look at it from underneath his jaw where you can see that it's very, very crooked. Um, I'll also be able to easily sculpt underneath his jaw and get all that area right without having to worry about it. Sorry. Um, I am going to attach this though to some wire to give me something to hold on to while I work on it and to give me an easier way to reattach it once it's finished. Uh, since I'm going to bake it, I don't want to have to reattach it to this wire that's sticking out because that would mean that I'd have to get my holes to line up exactly right. And I know that this has another end. There's one end. I'm looking for the, the full wrap. Well, I can use this end. So what I'm going to do is just Take my bolt cutters here. Cut off a piece. Lovely dogs. And I'm just going to make sort of a little loop so that I can actually stand her head, his head up instead of having to hold it the whole time. That will also mean that it can be sitting on something when it bakes instead of leaning on one side or the other, which could cause distortions. So I'm just gonna sort of stick that right down the middle of his head there. I wanna make sure it doesn't come out on either side or even get too close to either side because that could make it difficult to sculpt. Alright, 
So now it can now I can set him his head down. I can straighten it out here a little bit, and I can start working on it. Um, the first thing I noticed was that it was getting just a touch long, so I'm going to make sure that it doesn't grow as much as I can. It could be even a teensy bit shorter. Again, my reference photo, his head isn't, you can see by his ears and the angle of his eyes that his head isn't perfectly straight on, but it's not too bad. So I'll need to add just a little bit of length to make up for that. And it's very, very easy to make your heads too large. It's very common. Um, it makes sense because the horse's head is kind of the most visible part, I guess, the part that you look at the most. So I really like this photo because the horse is uh, paying attention, he's whinnying. It's a little bit better for this particular sculpture than a horse that's just calm, not doing anything, since Umbra is twisting and spinning and being silly. I'm going to keep going back and forth between my photos. This one, unfortunately, isn't quite square on like I keep saying. Um, so I'll need to use another photo for our measurements. This one is, the horse has his head tilted slightly towards us. I don't know if I actually have one in, in my group of photos that I've currently pulled up. That's perfectly square on from the side, unfortunately. Which means I should probably find one. And if I don't get bored before I do that. This one is pretty close. I don't know if he's exactly quite there, but pretty close. So I can just scale his head to the size that I need, and that actually worked out very conveniently. And of course, this head is a little bit bigger right now. The reason I have two sets of compasses, this one actually gets a lot bigger, which is also nice when you're doing bigger horses, but it does mean that I can lock one in place and for example use it for the overall head length which I like to measure it from the muzzle to the back of the jaw when I'm working on this it's just more convenient some people measure to the pole and that's fine too it's just just the way I do it I find that it's a little bit easier to have very distinct landmarks I almost forgot that needs to be a hair longer then this locks in place, so that's nice. Now I can keep that locked, and I can easily continue to uh, check it against.
will need to be a little bit bigger. That's right there. So I'm just going to check a few different measurements on here um, to see if I'm in the right ballpark. Nope. I'm way too narrow above the eye, which is what I thought. Just double checking. But my eye is in just about the right place. That's always nice when that happens. to be a little bit higher, even more so on your lot more forehead, which is what I thought. I like to smooth on each layer as I go. I'll need to add more clay than this, but it helps to ensure that all the layers grab each other and don't want to separate and pull apart as I keep sculpting. Sorry about all the dog noise chewing in the background there. Keeps them happy. starting to look more like a horse face. Getting the overall silhouette a little bit closer. Apparently there's glitter in my clay. I don't know why there's glitter in my clay. I'm supposed to move glitter in the house. Make sure he has room for some brains in there. Okay. I'm take a two minute break here and I'll be right back. All right, uh, sorry.
just pulling up a couple of different photos here. Just want to make sure that I have a clear idea of where I'm going as much as I ever do. I needs to be a little bit higher but is in roughly the correct position in this direction which I marked with that little nick there A lot of people use a uh, bead or something to sculpt around for the eyeball. It's a perfectly reasonable way to do it. I Sometimes I do that, but usually lately I don't. The eyeball itself is not exactly round, and so if you use a round bead, the shape is a little bit off. Um, stuff like that. Plus I end up having to move them around so much that it just gets in my way. It seems like I can never get them in exactly the right place on the first try. It's very tempting to make the eyes face too far forward on the horse's face, um, like, like human eyes, but horses are prey animals and their eyes are on the sides of their head much more so than on the front of their face like a dog or a human or an owl or something. kind of lost the brow bone here. It's like his eye is just jutting out. No bone around it, so I need to make sure that I don't don't forget about that. Not like this. It looks kind of funky without it.
also trying to make sure that he doesn't look like he's looking too far forward, which one of my references, my main reference that I have up right now, he is looking forward, so that can be a little bit tricky. I don't want... Um, he's, he's looking to his right, basically. Uh, my sculpture is Umbra is. So I want to make sure that he looks like he is looking to his right. Although, of course, when people paint them, they won't necessarily paint him looking that way. And it's a fairly subtle distinction. But it's one that I like to make. I'm going to take another break because I think the dog might need me and I'll be right back. Okay. Got distracted by the computer there. Only for a minute or two though. It's so easy to totally change things with just a tiny touch of the tool here. Or with a tiny touch of your fingertip for that matter. This Sculpey is so soft right now that it's very easy to squish it. Um, as it sits, it does firm up like over the course of weeks or months. But this stuff is all quite new since I just started him. So it hasn't had a chance for any of the plasticizers to leach out. If you uh, let it sit on a piece of paper, they'll actually leach out into the paper, so you can firm it up that way. But I don't know if you can do that after you've started sculpting with it. It might uh, cause it to distort some or be uneven. I don't know. So I have to decide if I want his mouth open at all. Having the mouth open is kind of fun, but makes it a little difficult to cast if it's open all the way. If it's open just a little bit, it'll be okay so that there's not a continuous gap between both sides. Also, I have to, I have to decide if this is a position that the horse is actually likely to have his mouth open in. It's hard to say for sure. I have to look at my reference photos and think about it some. For now, I'm going to leave it pretty much closed. Might give him a little, little gap at the corner of his lip here, but that's about it. So this is my new tool. I, I haven't actually used it at all. I've not even tried it, so. It's like a tiny little ribbon tool. That's pretty cool. I'll cut a little bitty slice out. And the two sides, this is the one I got from an artist at Dragon Con. I can't get it off of there. Um, this side's just a even loop and this one has a little bit of a point to it so it has a flat area as well. Looks like something that could be really useful. So right now that eye doesn't, I 
doesn't look quite right. It looks like it's sitting on the face instead of being within the face. I think it's because the angles aren't quite there yet. have some very large photos here at full size this one is like <laughs> probably bigger than life size so that's very helpful um, for seeing where the skin wrinkles and it'll even be helpful later on if I decide I want to do paint hair by hair I can actually see the direction of that every hair is growing in sometimes that's a little too much information I'm going to recheck and see if I have things in the right place because I have a sneaking suspicion that that eye has migrated while I've been working on it. And it has, it's moved downwards. So I have a couple of options here. Um, I can move the eye upward, I can adjust the rest of the face around it since the eye is the most finished part. Um, I think I'm going to move the eye upward a little bit, I guess, I don't know, maybe not. Let's try moving it, moving the rest of the face downward around it. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit off of his forehead and the top of his head in general. Of course if I had already sculpted both eyes, I uh, would have to make sure they are both even. If they are both even but both in the wrong place, I could do exactly what I'm doing right now and adjust the rest of the face around them. If I had sculpted more of the rest of the face, I would probably move the eyes rather than change the rest of the face. It just depends on where everything is right now. I have to be more careful when I work on the second eye to make sure that it lines up properly because I don't want to have to move it. And obviously I can't move the entire... If I get one crook, if one is crooked, then I have to move it one way or another. Can't just adjust the rest of the face around it if they're not even. I check my length again. If I adjusted things, they're still okay. Now I'll need to add a little bit more to his to his uh his lower jaw as well. So again, because I hadn't put anything in at all to the bottom part of his face, it made more sense to do it that way rather than moving the eye.
I think I actually got these metal tools at uh, Harbor Freight or something. They were like six dollars at Harbor Freight instead of for a whole set with a bunch of them instead of like five dollars each at the art supply store. So it's worth checking out different places sometimes. Sometimes the art supply stores are a lot more expensive than the hardware store for exactly the same thing. Sometimes you can't find it anywhere but the art supply store. Sometimes the uh, hardware store has things that the art supply store doesn't have. So it's worth looking around and things don't have to be specifically designed for what you're using them for. Um, you can sculpt with, you know, a toothpick or a pencil. I know people who use mechanical pencils when they're sculpting. Use whatever works for you. It is nice though if your tools are, are smooth and clean. It uh, makes them slide across the material and not be so grabby. So I have some wooden tools that I use that I uh, actually sand down and oil every so often to keep them smooth. Otherwise they start to develop some roughness, especially if they get wet. One thing that I've noticed when, when I, once I totally finish the piece, I'll probably will gloss his eyes before I send him off to be cast. You can actually see the difference between glossed and unglossed original in the castings. The eyes on the castings, if the original was glossed, the eyes will actually be shiny. They'll be so smooth. That's how uh, fine of detail, though, the casting process for resin can pick up. It can pick up the difference in texture just from glossing it, it, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it'll pick up fingerprints, so all these, you can, I don't know if you can see them in the video, but I have a lot of very little light fingerprints all over him, and I'll have to uh, smooth those all out before I'm finished, otherwise they will show up in the finished piece. And I, I don't want that. <laughs> you don't need my fingerprints on everything. There's a lot of stuff going on in a horse's face. There are a lot of muscles and tendons and veins and stuff. And it usually takes me a few tries to find photos that are good enough so I can make sure that I'm getting everything just right. So this initial stuff usually gets worked over a few times. But it'll at least give me an idea of where things are.
at this point, very, very small changes can make a huge difference in the horse's expression. Which is why I'll have to rework this a few times still, probably. To get it to just where I need it. I keep knocking him over on the side that's not done yet. It's going to be a problem when I work on that side. Well, I'm not overly happy with that just yet, but I'm going to work on the other side some, I guess. So I want to make sure that they do stay reasonably even. Lining up that second side is always much trickier than doing the first side for me. Right now it looks pretty uneven, but I'm going to build up to build his brown eyelid on this side.
this is the point where I pull out my mirror to check. It's hard to see eventually if things are even or not. I've seen uh, things that are like a T-square just for doing this that you line up with the face. Looks like the jaw is not even, but hard to tell for sure if the face itself is. I think it's not too bad. It's the eyes that I'm looking at right now. And of course, uneven unevenness elsewhere can make things look off or can even make you think that things are even when they're not. It's all kind of works together. For the vast majority of this, I'm using the same tool, which is an extra firm angle chisel clay shaper in size zero. I have a bunch of those. Um, they do kind of dry out over time, and they start to crack and not leave quite as smooth marks. They also do vary a little bit from each individual one, so some of them are a little bit pointier and some of them are a little bit more blunt. Um, and both things have their use. This is a very pointy one, relatively speaking. Um, I don't know if I have a blunt one sitting right here with me. And I don't know that you'd be able to see on this camera anyway. But uh, I like to have both available. And therefore, I try to pick them out in person. And here, fairly near me, there's a Jerry's Artorama is a great, great store. Their prices are very, very good and they have a wonderful selection of art materials, um, including pretty much, I think, the full line of clay shapers. They certainly have all the ones that I use. And so I like to go there and, and pick some out. And they're not terribly expensive. I think they're like six or eight dollars each for these little ones. The bigger ones are more expensive, but I don't use those very often. So I don't really need them. Um, I find that my fingers can do most of the stuff that the that once you get bigger than about a size uh so it's probably a size two. Yeah, size two. I don't I don't use ones that are any bigger than that. I have some somewhere. Um I think I pointed out the one that's over there before, but that one's not very useful because it's all chewed up. I should really just throw it away. Um But the little ones are really nice because they have a texture that's kind of similar to to your fingers almost, and that it's it's yielding, it's a little bit flexible, so it doesn't leave such a hard line. But of course they come in different shapes and they're much finer than a finger, which is really just immensely helpful. So he will be looking forward, he could be looking to his right with both eyes. This side will be looking forward, so I'm going to try and capture that a little bit. As far as I know, as I understand it, horses can look in several different directions. They can focus both eyes behind them, both eyes in front of them, or both eyes to either side. So you have quite a few options when you're looking at it. And a lot of times that doesn't really show up too much until the paint part, but I do try and think about it when I'm sculpting and sculpt it in as well because it does change the, the shapes around the eyes and where things are. It's not just a matter of where the eyeball itself is looking. All the muscles around the eyes move a little bit too. This one seems to be going a little bit better than the other one. It's a dangerous thing to say. <laughs> It's 
I don't know if you can tell, but I'm making sure that my fingers only grab by the top of his head or the sides of his cheeks. I don't want to hit that other eye and, and mess it up. Um, ideally, I'd probably be holding him by the wire, but that just doesn't work for me. funny how sometimes working on one side can make the other side suddenly make a little bit more sense in my head. Which is another reason I like being able to move around and work on different things. It can help clarify different areas. softer tool. And unfortunately, all of my soft tools are a little bit messed up that I have right here. So I probably need to go digging through my, uh, my bins and find... I would like an angle chisel, a number zero angle chisel in white. I know I have one, I just have to figure out where it is. I spend a lot of my time looking for reference photos in my stuff. Because <laughs> I'm messy. The reference photos are all nicely organized on the computer, that's easy the everything else that's not so much. It's hard to tell. I can't tell if those are even or not.
think his right eye is just a bit higher than his left eye. Hard to tell. I'm gonna set him aside for a while, then I'll come back. Probably work on his cheeks a little bit in there and 